all right what's going on youtube i'm back with another video thank you guys for stopping by this one um this one's kind of an impromptu video and i'll just go ahead and jump straight into what i want to talk about you guys can tell by the title but i'm a tennis coach in real life and so i feel like something like this is for one i'm just really passionate about it but two it's something that um continues to challenge me as a coach and um as anyone um at least i would hope anyone would want to be the best that they can be and I definitely am trying that. And so I feel as though it's important to talk about this where um, if you guys haven't paid attention to Emma Raducanu over the last few months, if not last few years, since she won the U.S. Open, uh, she's been kind of switching up the coach situation, right? Um, I can't say exactly how many coaches she's had, but I literally just saw an article through my Google News uh, feed that says she just got a new coach. And I'm pretty sure I at least saw her have one other different coach earlier this year so we've gone through we had one we got this new guy and now we're having another one um at least you guys can correct me if i'm wrong in the comments if anyone watches this video but um i just want to say just to take a second i appreciate everyone that watches my videos we're steadily getting views and the subscribers are growing this is my favorite platform to be able to create for i can just sort of jump in and and talk about something that i know and love as you guys can see the giant tennis ball behind my head I have tennis lessons later today. I just scheduled some practice for myself. Um, I eat, breathe, and sleep this game, as I tell people. Um, one of those coaches who's kind of self-taught, I was certified through the PTR, but um, I just use my on-court knowledge uh, to be able to give my perspective, as I believe anyone and everyone can be a coach. Um, and I don't think that I'm a good coach. I've heard that I'm a good coach, and then I, at times I feel as if I'm not doing very well. So. I'm just passionate about it and I'm passionate about growth no matter what I do. But uh, for those that don't know me, I just want to go over that briefly. I also do quite a few other things. So I get to talk about this here on this YouTube channel. I have an Instagram account, which if I can, I'll put onto the screen. You guys should go follow me there um, where I talk more about tennis specifically and coaching. This YouTube channel, I'm kind of diving more so now into just talking about athletes and giving my opinion on things. Um, I started off doing reactions, but... Maybe I'll throw some of those in there with time, but um, if anyone makes it up to this point in the video, that's me. That's what I do. I'm a creator. Um, I create for my personal brand. I have a few other brands amongst this one. So getting back onto the topic with Emma um, being an athlete, um, and I would characterize myself as that also, but here in this case, we're talking about this need for coaching and the topic of coaching. Um, I feel as if it's extremely difficult working with the more advanced players. I have a few players myself that are at that high school level thinking of college and, and they're serious. And obviously, Emma Raducanu being a professional tennis player, I don't have any experience working with professionals, but um, I can assume it's quite the same where, um, you know, not the same, but she doesn't need to learn how to hit a forehand or how to hit a backhand. She doesn't need that in a coach. Um, it's so much more different. It's much more mindset. It's much more physical. Obviously, now I just read in this article, like I mentioned, the coach she's bringing on is more of a fitness coach than a tennis coach, which may surprise some people, but it makes perfect sense to me. I saw in the article headline um, and a little bit of the brief in the article, which I will link down below. Um, she's had to retire in a couple of her previous matches, which causes some, you know, brings about some concern, but at the same time, she's very young in my opinion, so hopefully they can just figure out what it is. I don't even know, I haven't been watching the tour, unfortunately, in the last couple months um, since the US Open, but um, hopefully it's nothing major that she's dealing with. Otherwise, I think she would have just attacked that one thing with a surgery or whatever, but getting back to the topic, um, I don't, I don't know what it is, the solution, like Nick Kyrgios playing without a coach. I think that that's one answer. Like some people like himself, he doesn't necessarily like someone would want to have to deal with him. Obviously, first things first, I would love to work with him. But, um, you know, to that point, um, the coach's role in a player's um, ability, performance and um, state of mind and, you know, and everything on tour when they're an, a tennis player. Is, is something that I think we will continue to talk more about and see the importance in as we go forward, especially with this new generation of tennis, where, I don't know, something about the game has been changing. I mean, it's it's been the same, but at the same time, it's so different where the players are different, and that's that's the biggest thing. And they're not so different from Agassi and, and what we've once had in our athletes, but at the same time, for Nick Kyrgios, 
I, I think he's doing pretty well without a coach. And then here we are with Emma Raducanu, who has switched a few times. And I can't think of anyone off the top of my head, but there's been a few other players that have switched up their coaches a couple of times, including Novak Djokovic, who got rid of his long-term coach to bring about a few different coaches after, in my opinion, he was in the midst of his most dominant era, most dominant time, which was so confusing to me. But it happens, and it happened. Djokovic did that for a reason. Emu Raducanu is doing this for a reason. Obviously, it's in their head. They want a new coach. Whatever it is, their coach can't work with them and decides to leave. Or even maybe let's just say it's a financial thing, which I highly doubt for those guys. Um, You know, we're not talking about the players ranked a 1,000 in the world or something like that. So as a coach myself with high school players that are, that are good, um, we're talking potential at least D3 college players and your typical D3, D2, like these college kids can go on and a lot of times do go on to play professionally. Um, it's just an interesting thing. I love coaching myself. Um, I, for one and one, who's going to say to a student very quickly, whether it's a new newbie lady, you know, 40 years old who wants to play local league tennis, I can't work with you. And um, I, I just have found that passion in that I have my ability to help and in my perspective. And if it doesn't help, then I'm not going to just do it for the money. And so I think that on the flip side of that argument, um, what role does a coach play for these players that can play? It's very interesting. So I hope that this works out for Emma. I want to see her succeed. That's the ultimate goal from a coach, uh, whether it's her coach or a coach in Richmond, Virginia. Um, I'm a big fan of her and I think that this is just something that we will continue to talk about. So let me know what you guys think. I'm coming back with a lot more content. I know I said that in my last video, which was a shorts video, but subscribe for more. Let me know what you guys think again. And um, yeah, see you guys soon.